This process of absorbing light, of course, uh, and convert it into energy is known as photosynthesis. And you can see that very vividly right here with this plant. You see the, the, the green pigment here, the chlorophyll, is basic evidence that this plant has undergone and is undergoing photosynthesis. That's why it's big and enlarged, and there's a lot of energy that's captured in here from the process of photosynthesis that has taken place. Okay, very good. Okay, the summary of photosynthesis is basically this. Uh, six CO2, which is six molecules of carbon dioxide, plus six H2O, which is six molecules of water. Okay, in combination with sunlight, gives you C6H2O6, which is glucose or sugar, plus six CO2s, which is six, uh, six molecules of oxygen. Okay, that's critical for you to see. Now, what I want you to be able to see is where these partic uh, this particular uh, process or chemical equations are taking place. And it's right here in the chloroplasts of algae and plant cells and in cell membranes of certain prokaryotes. Now, what is a prokaryote? I don't know if, if we can retract way, way back when we did cell structure. Okay, I mentioned that uh, whenever you have like a nucleus, a, a cytoplasm, chloroplast, cell membrane, all those organelles are found in what we call a eukaryote. And eukaryote because it contains a nucleus. Now, when cells do not have a nucleus, they're considered to be a prokaryote. Okay, and this is especially found in bacteria and arachnobacteria, which are the first organisms that first came into play. In, uh, which are much lower than your regular uh, plants like these that are C3 plants actually, uh, you know, like your trees outside, for example. All those are much higher level organisms than your bacteria. Okay, very good. Okay, now, photosynthesis, basically, there's three phases, okay? And phase one, and of course, in some textbooks, Instead of saying that it's a phase, they're going to say that it's a stage, but it's the same thing. Okay, phase one is where energy is absorbed from the sun. That's very critical for you to remember. And then in phase two, light energy is converted to chemical energy using the carrier uh, molecule NADPH, which is temporarily stored in ATP. And you're probably going to say, what in the world is NADPH? Okay, for the sake... To keep it simple, all I want you to remember is that that's a carrier molecule. Just remember that. It's a carrier molecule that carries electrons that's going to be stored in ATP for the purpose of making glucose. Okay, now, NADPH stands for nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide phosphate, which is a coenzyme, and that's a huge term, okay? It's, it's huge, but just remember that, especially with this process, with photosynthesis and with cellular respiration, you're going to have big, huge name words for all these temporary uh, compounds that are formed in the process. Now, what is an enzyme? An enzyme is a chemical which is a catalyst, and a catalyst starts or initiates a chemical reaction. That's what I want you to see. Then, of course, ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, which is the unleaded gas of the cells that I mentioned to in my previous lecture on cell structure. Okay? Now, on phase three, the chemical energy stored in NADPH and ATP powers the formation of organic compounds using carbon dioxide or CO2. That's why, if you remember on the equation at the very beginning, it says six CO2, so you've got to have that CO2 or carbon dioxide to be able to form all these organic compounds that are going to be formed. Okay? Very, very good.